Hello everyone. Welcome to Civilians class. In this video, we will be discussing about a very interesting topic in irrigation engineering. Cross drainage works. If we go through the previous question papers of SSC JE exam, we will find a number of theory and numerical problems from the same topic. So in today's session, we will be covering all the theory concepts regarding cross drainage works and towards the end of the session, we will be discussing the previous year questions also so that you have an idea about how the numerical problems or theory questions may occur in the question paper. So without any further delay, let's move on to the topic. So today's topic is cross drainage works. So as the name suggests, it is the work constructed. at the crossing of a canal and a drain. So this is how you define a cross drainage work. The works which are constructed at the crossing of a canal and a drain. So a drain in cross drainage work indicates a river. Both the canal and the river, both are drains. Canal is an artificial drain and river is a natural drain. We know that. But simply if we are uh, using the word drain, it indicates a river. So here, when a canal crosses a river, we are constructing a cross drainage work. It is very similar to a bridge that we see in our day to day life. What is a bridge? A bridge is a structure which is constructed when a road is crossing a river or any other waterway. Am I right? Yes. So when we are constructing a road and we approach a river and we have to take the road across the river, what do we do? We construct a bridge there. Similar to that bridge, here we are constructing a cross drainage work. The only difference is that the bridge we usually see carry traffic above it. But in a cross drainage work, we can see that water is carried over the bridge. Okay. So cross drainage work is very similar to a bridge which carries a road. Here the only difference is through the bridge we are crossing the canal across the river. Okay. So just for uh, the sake of studying or uh, in simple words, you can remember it like that. A cross drainage work is very similar to a bridge. Okay, so here the crossing is between a river and a canal. But in a highway bridge, what we see is a river and a road is being crossed. We are taking the road across the river in the case of the normal bridges that we usually see. So here we are crossing two waterways. One is the river and the other one is a canal. So basically the bridge which is constructed, you can say bridge or you can say a structure. So a bridge which is constructed at the crossing of a canal and a drain. I repeat, please remember when we see the word drain in any question regarding cross drainage work, we sh you should remember that the drain indicates river which is the natural drain and canal indicates the artificial drain that we construct for different purposes. Okay, so the word drain means that is river. So to solve the numerical problems that comes under cross drainage work, we need to know some basic concepts from this topic. So, so basically in this topic we are dealing with two waterways or two drains that is a river and a canal. So imagine we have a river cross section and a canal cross section too. Here we have a standard trapezoidal canal cross section also. So for a river or you can call it as simply a drain. So in a river, the bed level of the drain or river is popularly known as drainage bed level. We call it as drainage bed level. And the maximum water level that can occur in a river is called as high flood level. 
okay so these terminologies are required so solve the problems that will be asked from cross drainage works because they will be using frequently we will be seeing all these levels in the questions high flood level drainage bed level canal bed level etc so you should clearly know what is a dbl and what is an hfl or in which waterway it comes okay so drainage bed level is dbl so regarding a river we have two reduced levels that is drainage bed level and high flood level that is hfl okay so we have learned about the two reduced levels that will be discussed in the topic that is the bed level of the river commonly known as drainage bed level and the maximum water level that is possible in a river we know that for a maximum water level to happen in a river there should be a flood and that is why it is known as high flood level and the bed level of river is also known as <coughs> stream bed level you can call it like that also so dbl or sbl that is stream bed level both are the same you can use either of the levels either of the reduced levels you can apply okay so the bed level of the river is known as drainage bed level or stream bed level and the maximum water level is known as high flood level or hfl now coming to canal so similarly the bed level of canal is known as canal bed level and we all know that the maximum water level that can occur in a canal is known as fsl that is full supply level because we control the flow in the canal okay so when we are supplying it according to the irrigation purposes there may be the maximum supply may occur and that is known as full supply level so regarding canal we have two reduced levels cbl which is canal bed level and fsl which is full supply level okay so so far we have discussed about the important reduced levels that we should be considering while solving the questions from cross drainage work so i repeat for a river we have two reduced levels the bed level of the river is known as drainage bed level or stream bed level and the maximum water level in the river is known as high flood level and for a canal the bed level is known as canal bed level and for canal the maximum water level is known as full supply level and normally what we find is that for numerical problems they will be giving us the depth of water in the river and either of the reduced level for example you will be given the drainage bed level value for example 100 meter and the depth of water will be given as 2 meter so you can find hfl from these two values what is the relation it is very simple so hfl is equal to drainage bed level plus the depth of water you can find it this way and you can find the dbl also vice versa drainage bed level is equal to high flood level minus depth of water so please note when you attend the questions you should take care if the drainage bed level is given and the depth of water is also given so you can find hfl by adding drainage bed level with the depth of water will give you the hfl similarly in canal also if the depth of water in the canal is given you can find fsl or canal bed level so if the fsl is given and you have to find out the canal bed level then fsl minus depth of water will be equal to canal bed level or vice versa canal bed level plus depth of water is equal to fsl okay so these are all about the basic reduced levels we should know in order to study this topic i hope that is clear now moving on the different types of cross drainage works
Okay. So CDW smallest, that is a short form of cross drainage works. So we will be discussing what are the different types of cross drainage works that are possible. We already said that a cross drainage work is a structure that you construct when you cross or when there is a crossing between a canal and a river. Okay. So, there are various types of cross drainage works that are possible, you know, always it is not like canal is above the drain. There are also possibilities that the bed level of the river is above that of the canal. That is when we are planning a canal, we find out that the bed level of the canal is much below the river that is supposed to be crossed. Okay. So, in that case, what will be doing? So, similarly, there are different types of cross drainage works that will come across that can, uh, that is possible. So, we will be discussing about the different types of cross drainage works now. So, basically there are three types of cross drainage work. One, canal above the drain, which means the canal is crossing the drain from the top. Okay, that is we are ca carrying or we are crossing or we are taking the canal across the drain. Canal is on the top and river is at the bottom. Okay, so canal is above the drain or canal is crossing above the drain. The second possibility is drain over the canal. Drain over the canal, which means Canal is moving through the underside and river is above the canal. Okay, so that is a rare possibility actually and it is a complicated construction too. Still there is a possibility that we have to cross the canal under the drain. Okay, so the second case is the river is above the canal or the canal is under the river. Okay, so the first one is canal above the river. The second one is river is above the canal. And the last possibility is canal and drain at the same level. Which means the bed level of the canal and the drainage are the same or they are crossing at the same level. So, these are the three types of cross drainage works that are possible. So, when the canal is moving above the river or the river is moving above the canal, that means we are carrying the canal under the river. We have to carry it under the river. And the last one is both are at the same level. Now, in these three types of cross drainage work, we have different structures. We know that cross drainage work is basically like a bridge. So, when the canal is moving or canal is passing above the river, there are two possibilities. It can either be an aqueduct or a siphon aqueduct. Okay. So, for the exam, most of the questions will be regarding the types of cross drainage works. That is, you will be have you will be asked to find out which type of cross drainage work is mentioned in the numerical problem or the theory question. So, you have to find out and you have to fix which cross drainage work is that. So, if a canal is passing above the river, there are two possibilities. Either it will be an aqueduct or a siphon aqueduct. But if the river is passing above the canal or you can say is the canal is carried under the river, then there are two possibilities. One is a super passage and the other one is a canal siphon. Okay. So, these are the two possibilities. So, if a river is passing above the canal, then it should be either a super passage or a canal siphon. And coming to the last one, canal and drain at the same level. So, if the canal and river are carried at the same level or both the bed levels are the same, then the structure is known as level crossing. Okay. So, basically the summary of this topic is 
all about these types of cross drainage works okay so all the questions will be regarding which type of cross drainage work would you suggest in a particular situation so this is all about cross drainage work now we have to study how to identify the type of cross drainage work whether it is an aqueduct whether it is a super passage or whether it is a level crossing how we are going to identify the type of cross drainage work that is mentioned in the question okay so i hope this much is clear so this is the summary of what we are going to study in this video session so there are three types of cross drainage work the canal passing above the drain or river or the river passing above the canal and both the canal and drain are at the same level now let's see what is an aqueduct and why or how we identify the structure as a aqueduct so this is the first aqueduct that was constructed in the world this is situated in rome this is the roman aqueduct this was the first ever aqueduct that was constructed and this aqueduct was used for water supply in the city and for uh, supply of water as or for, and for supplying water to the irrigation purposes etc so this was basically a multi purpose aqueduct so here below you can see that on the bottom or under the canal you can see a river passing through and above we have constructed a structure to cross or to take the canal across the river so this is the oldest aqueduct you can ever find and this is the roman aqueduct and this is very different from the modern aqueducts we see because the construction is slightly different you can see that there is a two tier system constructed here so in this first tier there is no passage of water instead it is open to the public uh, like it is like a tourist place so you, people can come and spend time there as a recreational objective and through the top tier that is the second tier we will be taking the canal water across the river so to supply water to the city okay so basically this is a two tier system so in the first tier there is no passage of water the or we don't find any drain in the first tier in the second tier the canal water is taken above the river okay so this is the first aqueduct that is the roman aqueduct and it is still standing strong and perfect and it is serving the purpose for it was constructed now coming to the modern aqueduct this is the most modern aqueduct that is present in the world and it is in germany this is the german aqueduct so here you can see that we have a river passing under and a canal which is taken across the river and this structure is known as aqueduct now let us find out why it is called as an aqueduct okay so this is the canal and this is the river hope it is clear so here we have the river and here we have the canal so from the figure you can conclude that this canal is used for navigation purpose also so it is used for serving irrigation purposes as well as for navigation so basically it is a multi purpose canal okay so there is a canal and a river and now why it is called as an aqueduct or how you identify it as an aqueduct let's find out okay so this is a much closer view of the german aqueduct so here you can see that this is the canal which is uh, the currently taking navigation or currently used for navigation purposes and on both sides of the canal we have service roads which you can see the people are using these the uh, service roads on either sides and below we have a river so this is called as an aqueduct because the hfl of this river this is the hfl of the river am i right yes the maximum water level that is present in the river is known as high flood level so the hfl of the river is much below the canal bed level okay or in simple words you can see that there is a gap between the hfl and the canal bed level there is a clear gap or free board or a clear distance between the hfl and 
the canal bed level. They are not touching each other. There is no interference. Okay. So, such a structure is known as an aqueduct. I repeat, when the HFL of the river passing under the canal is much below the canal bed level, then it is known as an aqueduct. Isn't it? Normally, the bridges we see in our day-to-day -day life, it is also the same case. There is a gap between the HFL of the river passing under the bridge and the deck of the bridge. There is a clear gap between the bed level and the water that is flowing below the bridge. In such cases, we call it as an aqueduct. Okay, so that is the condition of an aqueduct. So, to be very clear, let's use a diagrammatic representation. So, here you can see that there is a natural stream or a river passing under and there is a canal which is taken across the river. So, here it is very clear that as we said earlier, the canal bed level is much above the HFL or the HFL is much below or sufficiently below the canal bed level and that is when we call it as an aqueduct. So, here we are using the word SBL. You know what is an SBL? SBL is stream bed level. Okay. So, this is another representation of an aqueduct where we see how the canal water is carried above the river. So, here you can see that a river is passing under the canal. A river is passing under the canal and on the top we are carrying the canal water. So, here you should understand that the canal is carried through a concrete trough or you can say it is a concrete vessel. So, the canal water is carried in a trough or a concrete vessel in which one side is used as an inspection road. That is basically this trough is divided into two compartments and the first compartment carries a service road also. That is for inspection purposes to find out the depth of flow or the velocity of flow etc. To monitor the flow parameters we are giving an inspection road which is usually open to the public also. Okay. So, this is basically how an aqueduct looks like. Okay. So, there is a clear gap between the HFL of the river and the canal bed level which is carried across the river. So, there is a clear, back, the, a clear gap between the two and there is no contact. So, it, you call it as an aqueduct. Now, let us see a real picture. So, this is how the top or the canal part looks like. So, as we said earlier, there is an inspection road on one side of the trough and the water is flowing underneath. So, you can see a lady enjoying the view, beautiful view from the top because all the canals here are used for navigation purposes in Germany. So, this is a recreational boat that is carrying people around. Okay. So, this is the top view of the canal. A much clearer view is seen in this figure. So, here you can see there is a trough which is carrying the canal water and it is divided into two compartments and one side is the inspection road. This is another view. This is a famous Mathur aqueduct that comes under South India that uh, normally we see in North India, sorry, South India. So, here also you can see that the canal is carried in a trough which carries water and one side is provided as an inspection road. This is the top view of the canal or water which is carried above the drain. So, in this we can conclude that the condition for an aqueduct is if we are given a question regarding the type of cross drainage work, the HFL is less than canal bed level. That is, there is a clear gap between the HFL of the river and the canal bed level of the canal which is passing over the river. Okay. So, this is how you identify the type of cross drainage work. First, you have to confirm whether the canal is above the drain or drain is above the canal. If you find out that the canal is above the drain, then you can conclude that it should be either an aqueduct or a siphon aqueduct. To find out whether it is an aqueduct, you should have to check whether the HFL is below the canal bed level. Then it is known as an aqueduct. Okay. 
So, if the HFL is less than the canal bed level, it is known as an aqueduct. Now, let us find out what is a siphon aqueduct. Okay, so this is a diagrammatic representation of how a siphon aqueduct looks like. So, a river is passing under the canal. The canal water is carried over the river. So, here what we find is the HFL of the river is slightly above the canal bed level or in practical terms what will be what will you find there the water below the river or the water passing through the river will be continuously striking or will be having an impact on the trough of the canal isn't it okay so we can represent it through a simple diagram the river The canal water is carried over the trough. Okay. So, here this is the canal bed level. This is the canal bed level. This is the full supply level or FSL. This is the drainage bed level. And in this case, that is a siphon aqueduct, what we find is that the HFL of the river is slightly above the canal bed level. Okay. The high flood level of the river passing under is slightly above the canal bed level, which is not practically advisable. You cannot recommend a structure like this. Okay. That is the water is continuously hitting the canal trough that is above. So, what we do in this case is, we depress the river bed at the point of crossing. The place or the location where we are supposed to cross the canal, we are depressing the river bed. The river bed is depressed by a particular depth, so that the HFL is lowered. You have to lower the HFL. So, we are depressing the river bed from the ground level okay so we have depressed the river bed by a particular depth from the ground surface and we will be concreting it we will be providing a concrete flooring and a concrete layer over this floor that is we will be providing basically we are providing a concrete floor in this portion okay so that the hfl is lowered below the canal bed level. This structure is known as a siphon aqueduct and why it is known as a siphon aqueduct because we all know we have studied in fluid mechanics what is a siphon. Siphon is a long bent pipe which is used to carry water from one point to another. So here if we see the HFL is lowered and it is almost similar to an inverted siphon and that is why it is known as a siphon aqueduct. That, that's why the name siphon aqueduct okay so the basic condition behind a siphon aqueduct is the hfl of the river is above the canal bed level and to lower the hfl what we do is we depress the river bed at the crossing so that the hfl is lowered and it passes under the canal and it is very similar to a pressure flow okay so the condition of a siphon aqueduct is that the hfl is greater than canal bed level. So, to lower the HFL, what we have done? We have depressed the river bed and we provided a concrete floor on the portion. We are concreting all these portions so that the river remains stable. Okay, the river bed remains stable. So, the HFL is lowered by depressing the river bed by a particular depth in the portion of the crossing. We cannot depress the river bed throughout. So, we are depressing the river bed at the point of crossing so that the HFL is lowered and it is passed under the canal. So, in the previous case, that is an aqueduct, we know that there is a clear gap between HFL and the canal bed level so that the HFL or the river water is flowing freely under gravity or it is has a free surface and it is flowing under gravity. 
but this in this case you cannot say there is a free surface because when you lower the hfl below the canal bed level it will be flowing through the or it will be passing under the bridge or it will be passing through the crossing in a almost like a pressure flow because there is no free surface there may not be a free surface for example yeah we have a section of the aqueduct so imagine here the hfl is above the canal bed level okay as we have said the hfl is above the canal bed level and what we do is we depress the river bed and then the hfl is lowered to say some level here okay the hfl is lowered to a particular level here so what happens is the water flows or it passes under the bridge similar to a pipe flow because it is like a closed portion it is like a conduit okay it, it may not have a free surface so we consider the flow in a siphon aqueduct or the flow in the river in case of a siphon aqueduct as a pressure flow and in an aqueduct it is flowing with a free surface under gravity but in a siphon aqueduct when the river is passing through this crossing portion when it is crossing the bridge or when it's crossing under the canal it is considered or it is assumed to be a pressure flow okay the other parts of the river are having a free surface and it is uh, flowing under gravity but when it is crossing this portion or you can imagine that the water is flowing between the pillars under a bridge you have a bridge there are a number of piers and the water is flowing in between the piers or pillars similar to a pipe flow because the hfl was above the canal bed level and you have lowered it but you cannot lower it below a particular point or you cannot lower it to a large depth so what happens is the hfl is lowered and maybe it is flowing similar to a flowing in a passage which is similar to a closed space or a pipe so imagine water flowing between the pillars of a bridge similar to a pipe that is uh, it is like uh, the water is flowing inside the pipe when it is crossing the canal the other parts will be open to the uh, atmosphere or it has a free surface so basically siphon aqueduct is considered as a flow or pressure flow for a river okay so let's conclude the condition so for a siphon aqueduct the condition is hfl is greater than canal bed level and it is assumed as a pressure flow so in the first case we assume it as a free surface that is the water is water in the river is flowing with a free surface under gravity under the canal but in a siphon aqueduct when the river is passing the canal that is when it is passing through the underside of the canal it is very similar to a pipe flow or a pressure flow you can't say it is completely or it is perfectly a pipe flow pressure flow but we can assume it as a pressure flow since it is moving in a, a clo closed space like there is a, a very little distance or very little free board between the underside of the trough and the hfl it is almost like it is um, flowing in a filled condition flowing full condition you can assume in that case okay now coming to the next category drain over the canal which means the river is passing above the canal so the two examples are super passage and canal siphon let's see what a super passage is okay so this is a diagrammatic representation of the super passage so basically when you think about the river passing above the canal above the canal we should understand that the river is originally present there always okay so the river was a natural river is a natural drain and it is always present there we are planning a canal across this river and we find out that the bed level of the canal is much below the river okay and there is no other option you have to carry the canal under the river so how do we construct such a structure first of all we have to bypass the water that is passing through the river we have to make it a dry area then you have to tunnel the canal or you have to drill the canal below the river okay and then you have to 
take the river water across the canal by constructing a trough that we have seen earlier. So, the river water will be passed across the canal or will be taken across the canal using a concrete trough. Okay. So, in the both cases, in the second category that is the river is passing above the canal, we have two structures, either it will be a super passage or it will be a canal cipher. So, let us find out what is a super passage. So, in this figure, we can see that a river or a drain, we call it as a drain, a drain is passing above the canal and the bed level of <coughs> drain is given as stream bed level, we also call it as a drainage bed level and we have a canal underneath. So, here it is very clear that the FSL of the canal that is passing below is much below the drainage bed level or stream bed level. That is very similar to an aqueduct. The only difference is that the river is on the top and canal is moving under the river. So, in this case what happens is FSL less than drainage bed level, there is a clear gap between the water which is flowing through the canal underneath and the bed level of the river which is passing above it. So, we call it as a super passage. I hope it is clear. So, you can compare the structures and study. So, in the first case, we had aqueduct in which river was passing underneath and canal was passing above it. So, if there is a clear gap that the water is not touching the uh, water which is flowing above or the canal is not, uh, water which is not, is, the water is not touching the uh, passage above it, then we call it as an aqueduct or a super passage. So, in aqueduct, there was a clear gap between the water flowing below and the bed level of the canal passing above it. And in super passage also, there is a clear gap between the water level of the canal passing underneath and the drainage bed level. So, we call it as super passage. So, we can conclude that for a super passage, the condition is FSL less than drainage bed level. There is a clear gap and also it is flowing with the free surface under the influence of gravity. Okay. So, aqueduct and super passage are almost very similar. The only difference is canal is above the river in the case of aqueduct and river is above the canal in the case of a super passage. So, in aqueduct and super passage, there is a clear gap between the water which is flowing underneath and the bed level of the structure passing above it. That is all about super passage. Now, let us move on to canal cipher. So, here also we can see that there is a name that is indicating the siphon pipe. So, why the name canal siphon? So, this is the condition for a canal siphon. So, what do we find here? Here, it is very clear that the FSL of the canal which is flowing below the river is much above the bed level of the river. Like in, likewise in siphon aqueduct, you can see here the water level of the canal or the water in the canal is continuously hitting the trough carrying river water above, which is not again advisable. Okay. So, the condition of a canal siphon is FSL of the canal flowing below is above the bed level of the drain. That is, the water is splashing or water is hitting the can river trough above the canal. So, what do we do? So, similar to a siphon aqueduct, what we do here is, we have the canal underneath. Okay. So, in the portion of the crossing, here it is shown that the FSL is above the drainage bed level. So, what we do is, similar to a siphon aqueduct, we are depressing the canal bed. So, in a siphon aqueduct, we have depressed the river bed, but in this case, we are depressing the canal bed. Okay. So, the canal bed is depressed for a particular depth. So, what happens? The FSL is lowered and it is brought under the river. Okay. So, here also the name siphon 
indicates that it is similar to an inverted siphon. Okay, normally siphon is a bent pipe which is used for carrying water from one point to another and here it is almost, you can just say like that, it is almost similar to a inverted siphon and hence the name canal siphon. Okay, so you can remember it like that also. You can keep it in mind that whenever we depress a river bed or canal bed, there will be a siphon attached to the titan. Okay. So, in siphon aqueduct, you are depressing the river bed, but in a canal siphon, you are depressing the canal bed. So, that the FSL is lowered and it can pass under the river. Okay. So, here also you should remember that the water will be flowing inside or flowing under the river under pressure or it will be similar to a pressure flow. I again, uh, I am repeating again, that is imagine the water is flowing between the piers under the bridge. Okay. So, in a siphon aqueduct and canal siphon, the water is like it is, it is a fully flowing condition. It is not a partial flow, it is a fully flowing condition. The uh, space, the space is, the water is flowing full inside the passage. Okay. You can imagine it like a tunnel also. When you have seen the train passing under the tunnel, like likewise here the water is flowing under the tunnel that is the under the bridge or under the crossing. So, it will be like flowing full condition. It will be in a flowing full condition. So, you can imagine it as a pressure flow. But in aqueduct and super passage, it is like a free surface. The water is free. Uh, there is no overflowing condition in that case. So, the water is flowing with the free surface under gravity under the bridge. But in these two cases, that is siphon aqueduct and canal siphon, the water is passing under the bridge in a fully flowing condition or flowing full condition. That is why we consider it as similar to pressure flow. Okay. So, this is the case of a canal siphon in which the FSL of the canal is much above the drainage bed level. And to lower this FSL, what we do is we depress the canal bed. Okay. So, let us conclude the condition. The FSL is above drainage bed level. That is the condition for a canal siphon. Okay. So, we have completed four different types of cross drainage works. That is, first case is the canal is passing above the river. It should be either an aqueduct or siphon aqueduct. If there is a clear gap between the water flowing below and the bed level of the structure above, then it is known as an aqueduct. Okay. And similar to an aqueduct, we have a super passage where river is above the canal. Okay. So, if there is a clear gap between the canal water flowing below and the bed level of the river passing above, it is known as super passage. So, always remember in simple terms, if there is a sufficient gap between the water below and the bed level of the structure above, it should be either an aqueduct or a super passage. If the canal is passing above, it is an aqueduct and if the river is passing above the canal, it is a super passage. But in siphon aqueduct and canal siphon, what we find is the water running below is much above the bed level of the structure that is passing above and it will be hitting the trough of the river or canal which is passing above. So, you have to depress the river bed or canal bed. That is, there is no sufficient gap between the water below and the bed level of the structure above. Okay. So, in a siphon aqueduct, the high flood level of the river is above the canal bed level. So, you can conclude it as a siphon aqueduct. Okay. So, in simple terms, always remember when you are asked about an aqueduct or siphon aqueduct, just check about the HFL. If the HFL is below canal bed level, it is an aqueduct. If the HFL is above canal bed level, you can call it as a siphon aqueduct. But when the river is passing above the canal, check the condition for FSL. If the FSL is below or sufficiently below the drainage bed level, you can conclude it as a super passage. And if the FSL is hitting the river passing above, you can conclude it as a canal siphon. And the last structure is canal and river at the same level, that is level crossing. 
both the bed levels will be the same. Okay. So let's see the picture of a level crossing. So this is a representation of level crossing. So here you can see that both the waters are allowed to mix each other because the canal bed level and the drainage bed level are at the same level. So we are allowing it to mix with each other and the canal is taken uh, across on the uh, canal is taken across the river. Okay. So that is very simple. There is no condition to be uh, concluded. The bed levels of the canal and the river are at the same level. The water is allowed to mix each other and it is known as a level crossing. Okay. So here is the conclusion of the conditions that we have studied so far. So the important questions are always from the first two types of cross drainage work. That is either canal is over the drain or the drain is above the canal. So always remember, if you find out that when you get a question, First, you should confirm whether the canal is above the river or river is above the canal. So, once you confirm that the canal is above the river, then you should shorten your options or you should uh, shortcut or uh, what to say. You should conclude that the structure should either be an aqueduct or siphon aqueduct. Okay? You, you should cut the options to aqueduct and siphon aqueduct. And if you find out that the river is above the canal, then you, the answer should be either a super passage or canal cipher. And we have already studied the conditions for the four of the structures. For canal passing above the river, you should always check about the high flood level. Once you confirm that the canal is above the river. And for river passing above the canal, you should check the condition for full supply level. Whether it is above the drainage bed level or below the drainage bed level. Now, let us discuss a small problem, numerical problem regarding cross drainage work. Okay, so let us see how to solve this problem. So, following data pertain to a natural drain crossing an irrigation canal. As I said earlier, you will be always given as natural drain, uh, the details of a drain. Drain means it is a river. Okay. So, the natural drain is river. So, the details of <coughs> river and a canal are given below. Let us find out what are the data given. The discharge of both canal and river are given 5 and 500 cumex respectively. The bed level of the canal is given as 120 and that of the river is 160. Okay. So, the canal bed level is 120 and the drainage bed level is 160. So, your first conclusion is the canal bed level is greater than drainage bed level. Isn't it? Yes. So, if the canal bed level is greater than the drainage bed level, the structure is canal over the drain. That is your first conclusion. You conclude that since the canal bed level is greater than drainage bed level, the type of cross drainage work is canal over the drain. Now you have to find out whether it is an aqueduct or siphon aqueduct. As we all know, if the canal is passing above the drain, it should be either an aqueduct or a siphon aqueduct. So I can strike the last two options. Canal, siphon and super passage are out of the question. Now, we have to confirm whether it is an aqueduct or a siphon aqueduct. So, for that, I have to check the HFL. Okay. So, let us see what is the high flood level condition. So, here the depth of flow of canal and river is given. The depth of flow in a river is 10 meter. So, as we said earlier, the HFL and FSL is not given. Instead, they have given us the depth of flow in both the canal and river. So, HFL is equal to drainage bed level 
plus the depth of water which is 10. Okay. So, drainage bed level is 116 plus depth of water is 10. So, the answer is 126 meter. Okay. So, what can you conclude from this? The HFL is 126 and the canal bed level is 120. Right. So, HFL is greater than canal bed level which means the structure is an aqueduct. Sorry, a siphon aqueduct. Okay. So, hope the procedure is clear for all of you. So, whenever we get a numerical question from this topic, first of all, you have to confirm whether the canal is over the drain or drain is over the canal. So, here the canal bed level is clearly above the drainage bed level. So, it is understood that the canal is passing over the drain. So, if the canal is passing over the drain, the structure should be either an aqueduct or a siphon aqueduct. And to confirm that possibility, we are finding out the high flood level. So, here high flood level is not directly given in the question. Instead, the depth of flow is given. And from the depth of flow, we find out the high flood level. So, when the when we got the high flood level as 126 meter, we concluded that the high flood level is greater than canal bed level. That is the water flowing underneath is continuously hitting the trough of the canal. So, we can conclude that since there is no clear gap between the two, the structure is a siphon aqueduct. The high flood level is greater than canal bed level. So, the structure is siphon aqueduct. Hope this procedure is clear. We are going to solve the other problems also in the similar manner. Now, coming to the previous year question discussion from the same topic. Now, we will be discussing a few problems and questions that has uh, come under the topic cross drainage works from the previous year SSCJE question papers. So, let us look at those problems. Okay, so coming to the first question that is from the SSC JE exam 2021. The question goes like this, when the canal bed level that is CBL is higher than the natural drainage, okay, then the canal is carried over a natural drainage. Such cross drainage work is called, okay. So, here we are not given any values regarding the reduced levels or any other details are not given. It is just mentioned that the canal bed level is higher than the natural drainage that is the river passing underneath. So, it is clear that the canal is above the drain and it is also mentioned that the canal bed level is higher than the drainage that is passing below. So, obviously the structure should be an aqueduct. Because in a siphon aqueduct, the canal bed level is not above the drainage. The HFL is above the canal bed level and the water is striking the canal. So, you cannot say it as a, uh, the aqueduct, it will be a siphon aqueduct. But in this case, it is clearly said that the canal bed level is higher than the river or natural drainage. Natural drainage is a river. Okay. So, the canal bed level is higher than the river passing underneath. So, the answer is an aqueduct. Okay. Moving on to the next question. Okay. So, let us find out how to solve this particular question. The following details pertain to the crossing of canal and the natural drain. The bed level of canal is given as 171 meter. That is canal bed level. The Full supply depth of the canal is given as 1.6 meter. The bed level of the drain that is drainage bed level is equal to 169.2 meter. Depth of flow in the drain that is again small d1 you can call it a small d1 is given as 2.5 meter. You have to identify the type of cross drainage work to be 
designed at the crossing location. So, as we have solved the other problem before, we are going to approach this question also in the similar manner. So, first let us conclude about the bed levels. Let us see. So, here we can see that the canal bed level is 171 meter. So, the canal bed level is 171 meter and the drainage bed level is 169.2 meter. Okay. So, it is very clear that canal bed level is greater than drainage bed level. Okay. Therefore, canal over the drain. That is our first conclusion. Clear? Okay. So, canal bed level is clearly above the drainage bed level. So, it has to be a canal over the drain. So, we know that if the canal is above the drain, there are two possibilities. Either it should be an aqueduct or a siphon aqueduct. So, to find out that, we have to calculate HFL. So, I am going to calculate the value of HFL. So, HFL is equal to, here depth of flow in the river is given as 2.5. So, drainage bed level plus the depth of flow which is equal to 169.2 plus 2.5 meter which is equal to 171.7 meter. Okay. So, we are getting the HFL as 171.7 meter. So, it is very clear that the canal bed level is or the canal bed level and HFL is related as the HFL is greater than canal bed level. Okay. So, therefore, HFL greater than canal bed level and therefore, the structure is a siphon aqueduct. Okay. So, here the answer is option D, a siphon aqueduct. So, I really hope this problem is clear. The procedure is clear to all of you. So, here the only thing we have done is first we confirm whether the canal is over the drain or drain is over the canal. So, since canal bed level is greater than drainage bed level, we find out that the canal is over the drain and then we find out the HFL. So, since the HFL is greater than canal bed level, the structure is a siphon aqueduct. Moving on to the next question. It is a simple theory question. Which of the following is not a cross drainage work? It is a very direct question. So, from the options you can see that Aqueduct, super passage, siphon, all these are cross drainage. Siphon indicates canal siphon. Sometimes the word siphon alone is used, then you have to conclude that it is a canal siphon. You have to understand that they are indicating a canal siphon. Okay. So, aqueduct, super passage, siphon is given and tunnel is given. Tunnel is not a cross drainage work. So, option D is the answer. Which of the following is not a cross drainage work? This is a question from JE exam 2020. So, answer is option T. Now, moving on to the next question. The following details pertain to the crossing of a canal with a natural drain. So, here FSL is given initially. FSL is 213.5. Canal bed level is given as 212 meter. High flood level that is HFL is given as 210 meter. The suitable type of cross drainage work is. So, let us find out what is the structure. So, here the details given are actually very limited. But we can find the answer very easily. Let us check out how. So, the FSL is given as 213.5. The canal bed level is given as 212 and the HFL is given as 210. So, it is very clear that 
the HFL is less than the canal bed level. What is the HFL value? That is 210, which is very much below the canal bed level, which is 212. So that means there is a clear gap between the water flowing under the canal and the bed level of the canal. Okay, so the structure is an aqueduct. HFL is less than canal bed level. So the answer is an aqueduct. Hope this is clear. Okay, so you just have to check whether there is a sufficient gap between the two or if there is not a gap. So if there is a gap between the canal flowing above and the river water, it is an aqueduct. If there is no gap or the river water is above the bed level of the canal, it is a siphon aqueduct. Okay. So in this case, there is a sufficient gap between the water flowing in the river and the canal bed level. So the answer is option C, that is an aqueduct. Now moving on to the last question. This question is also very similar. So the following details pertain to the crossing of a canal and a drain where the bed level of canal <coughs> CBL is given as 151 meter. The full supply depth is given as, let's take it as D is given as 1.8 meter. The bed level of drain that is drainage bed level is given as 149.4 meter. And the depth of flow in the drain, let's assume it as D1 is 2.1 meter. The suitable type of cross drainage work is. Okay, so let's solve this problem like before. Like we used to do in the other cases, like the previous problems. So let's first of all, check whether the canal is above the drain or drain is above the canal. So the canal bed level is given as 151 meter and drainage bed level is given as 149.4 meter. So from these two values, it is very clear that canal bed level is greater than drainage bed level. Therefore, canal over the drain. Okay. So, okay. So, we conclude that the canal is over the drain. Since the canal bed level is greater than drainage bed level. So, since we know that, and since now we know that the canal is above the drain, there are only two possibilities. Either it should be an aqueduct or it should be a siphon aqueduct. Okay, so we can rule out the possibilities of canal siphon and superpassage. Now, let us find out the HFL. So, HFL is equal to drainage bed level plus the bed level plus the depth of water. So, the depth of water in the river is given as 2.1 meter, 2.1. So that is equal to 149.4 plus 2.1, which is 151.5 meter. Okay. So again, here also we get the HFL is above the canal bed level because the canal bed level is 151 meter only. But the HFL is 151.5. That is the water passing through the river is slightly above the canal bed level. Therefore, the structure is a siphon aqueduct. Okay. So, this is how we solve problems regarding cross drainage work. First, you have to confirm whether the canal is over the drain or drain is over the canal. So here it is very clear that the canal bed level is greater than drainage bed level. So the canal is over the drain. So once you find out that the canal is above the drain, you can conclude that it is going to be either an aqueduct or siphon aqueduct. Now you have to find out the HFL to confirm whether it is an aqueduct or siphon aqueduct. 
So finding the HFL, always remember if the river bed level is given and the depth of water is also given, the bed level plus depth of water will give you the HFL. In canal also, if the canal bed level and depth is given, FSL is equal to bed level plus depth of water. Okay. So finding the HFL, we found out that the HFL is slightly above the canal bed level. So the answer is a siphon accurate. So, we are coming towards the end of this session. So, now you have an idea about how problems are, numerical problems are being asked from the topic cross drainage work. So, if you know the basics very correctly or very thoroughly, then you can easily solve all the problems. All you have to know is what is an HFL, what is a drainage bed level, what happens if there is a gap between the two structures or if there is no gap, then what it is called. Okay. So, basically, the conclusion of the theoretical concepts, you can shorten it to a single page of information. This is all about what we are studying in cross drainage work. We have three different types of cross drainage work. I am just summarizing the theory. That is the canal above the drain, drain above the canal and canal and drain at the same level. So, when you get a numerical question, first you should conclude whether it is canal above the drain or drain above the canal. Once you conclude that, you can shortlist the options to whether it is an aqueduct, siphon aqueduct, super passage or canal siphon. Okay. And when there is a clear gap between the structures, it is aqueduct and super passage. And when you are depressing the flow of a river or canal bed, it will be a siphon or canal siphon. So, this is all about cross drainage works. I really believe and hope that this video was useful to all of you. Please practice these questions again and uh, try to get maximum numerical questions from this particular topic. It is a very simple topic. Once you know the concepts, you are never going wrong in this type of questions. And you should never miss such questions too because it is a very simple concept. So, hope this video was interesting to all of you and it was useful as well. Thank you for watching. See you.